Hello, David here with my 1,000 mile review of the brand new Zip 303 S wheels that launched a few months ago. So in this video, I'll give you a detailed look at these new carbon tubeless hookless wheels, show you how easy fitting a tubeless tire is, and we'll go for a ride and talk about performance and ride quality. And then at the end, I'll give you my verdict on whether you should rush out and buy these new wheels or not. But before then, a quick reminder to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Nearly at 10,000 now, it's really exciting. And every time you subscribe, it helps me grow your channel and helps support my ambition to bring you high quality bike reviews every week. So make sure you keep hitting that red button down below. Right, let's dive in. Firstly, let's talk about the price. They cost 985 pounds here in the UK. And yes, 1,000 pounds, it's a lot of money. You buy a lot of nice things for that sort of cash, but it's an important price point in the carbon wheel market. Now, many, many years ago, carbon fiber wheels like this would cost many, many thousands of pounds and were only really seen in the professional peloton where you had to be a sponsored rider to get your hands on a set of carbon wheels. But thanks to the mass manufacturing capabilities of carbon fiber companies, we are now at a point where carbon fiber wheels can be had for £1,000 and in many cases, much less. So compared to what we had 10, 20 years ago, they are much more affordable than ever before. So it's an important point to cover. And it's pretty exciting really to see a company with their heritage and expertise, uh, race focused performance, bring a set of wheels down to this £1,000 market. To get their expertise and their experience developing and honing carbon fiber wheels in a package that costs a lot less than their very premium Firecrest and NSW wheels, which cost many thousands of pounds. So we have a full carbon fiber rim, 45 millimeters deep with a nice rounded profile. They are 27 millimeters externally and crucially inside the internal rim width is 23 millimeters and that design for the benefits of wide tires. That internal rim width is optimized, according to the company, for 28 millimeter wide tires, which these are right up to 50, 55, if you're doing gravel and adventure riding. So you can run narrower if you want to, 25 maybe, but you're best off going with 28. And my experience, I'll talk about later, has been really good with 28 millimeter wide tires. And the other benefit of a wide rim is when you fit a wide tire, you get a nice smooth profile none of that light bulbing you get when you put a wide tire on an hour rim. So you can see straight away, going to be improved aerodynamics. The rims are also tubeless only and hookless, a new carryover technology from the mountain bike world. We do have a lot to thank mountain bikers for, disc brakes, wide tires, and geometry influences on gravel bikes, and now hookless carbon rims. So the benefits of removing the hook, according to companies using hookless designs, is a stronger, and lighter rim that's also easier to manufacture. And with tubeless tires, you're running much lower pressures, so you don't need that hook to hold a high pressure clincher tire on. So you can get away without having that hook, so you have a lighter, stronger rim, as said before. These have a maximum pressure of 73 psi, which is gonna be low for a lot of people, but I've been running tires that 60 psi, so I'm not getting anywhere near that limit. The rims are laced to the company's own hubs with sealed bearings and center lock disc rotor attachments. Got nice bladed sapling spokes for a bit more aeroness and external nipples, which is a really nice touch. Uh, you can easily service these wheels if you need to true them. Um, but over 1,000 miles, I've not had to take a spoke key to them at all, so no problems in terms of reliability or durability on these wheels. Now, fitting tubeless tires is fairly straightforward, as I'll show you in my next segment. For this demonstration, I'm using the brand new Goodyear Eagle F1 tubeless tires. It's gonna fit them to the wheels and hopefully show you how easy it can be.
So there we go then, a piece of cake. No hassle, no drama, no fuss. Add some sealant and ready to ride. So are they fast then? Oh yes, there's no doubt about that at all. These are really quick wheels. You clearly get all the aero benefits of that aero profile carbon rim, uh, 45 millimeters deep and 27 wide. And then you get all the benefits of wide, low pressure tubular tires. So they're silky smooth on my rough roads here in the Cotswolds. Uh, plenty of comfort for dealing with bigger impacts and cobbles, gravel and potholes and sunken drains and such like. And there's loads of traction as well, loads of juicy, juicy traction when you're descending. You can really push them hard through the corners. They feel really planted and really stable as well. Just a really good set of wheels for long distance endurance riding when you're encountering all sorts of terrain and road surfaces, hills and descents. Just really reliable, a really steadfast set of wheels. As a lightweight rider, I've always struggled with deep section wheels that aren't very stable in crosswinds or gusty winds. And here in the Cotswolds, it can get quite breezy at times, and you can be right along a hedgerow, and there'll be a sudden gate or driveway, and the wind can whip through and just catch your wheels and catch you off guard. And it can be quite unsettling, uh, quite scary as well, I'll be honest. But these new Zip 303S wheels in that sort of situation feel really settled, really calm, don't do anything erratic, just really controllable and easy to manage in any sort of windy, uh, gusty conditions. On all my local time loops here in the Cotswolds, using some of my favorite routes, these wheels are clearly fast compared to other carbon fiber wheels I've used. Despite being on a Trek de Marnie, which is not really a pure race bike and not the lightest bike on the climbs either, but the weight of the wheels impresses on the climbs. I've mostly been using 28 millimeter wide tires, but I've also used 30 and 32s. They're optimized according to a US company for 28 millimeter wide tires. And you can certainly see why. You get a nice smooth profile with a tire and a rim that interface between rubber and carbon. Um, they look fast and they certainly feel fast. I've just found them a really nice set of wheels to live with. Uh, reliable, durable, uh, quiet, no problems at all really. Just a good solid set of carbon wheels that after a few miles they kind of disappear underneath you really, which is what I think you want with a good set of carbon wheels. You don't want any fuss, any noise, any drama. Just want them to deliver that speed and be reliable with it. Now, I don't know about you, but if I'm spending a thousand pounds on a set of carbon wheels, I want to buy them from a company and they will look after me if there are any issues. And that's certainly the case with Zip. You get a lifetime warranty for any defects, manufacturing or otherwise, which is a nice peace of mind, a bit of reassurance there. And as a company that's gonna be here tomorrow, I've seen a lot of wheel companies come and go over the last few years. It's pretty easy now to buy a set of carbon wheels from China and put your own label on them, but you don't know how long the companies are going to be around and whether they look after you if you have any warranty issues. But Zip are definitely going to look after you as any other big wheel brand will do. Just take a short interlude in this review to share this view with you. How good does it look? Welcome to Cotswolds, everybody. This is just spectacular. One of my favorite little pockets of Cotswolds to cycle in. Not bad at all, is it? As with any new technology introduced to the cycling market, there are obvious detractors and concerns around the pros and cons of a hookless carbon rim. Now, I've spoken to a few tyre and wheel manufacturers off the record about this topic. It's an interesting topic and one we might have to grapple with more going forward as hookless and tubeless become more popular. So there's this pressure limit of 73 PSI by ZIP, and if you look at the ETRTO's guidelines, one of the governing bodies who put out standards for wheel and tire brands, there's a maximum pressure for a tubeless setup of 80 PSI or about five bar. Now the idea of this quite low maximum pressure is there to prevent a tire blowing off. Now the reason you have a hook on a normal clincher rim is to prevent a tire blowing off the rim at high pressures, especially if you use 120 PSI, and especially if you're using carbon rim brakes, where the heat generated by braking can actually increase the pressure on the inner tube inside and then blow the uh, tire off, which has happened to me in the past on a set of Reynolds wheels back in Mallorca many, many years ago, going down a descent. The rims got so hot, transferred that energy into pressure in the inner tube and the tire blew off the rim, which is pretty scary, but luckily it didn't crash. But that's another story for another day. Now, if you like your narrow tires at high pressures, and I'm talking 120 PSI, 
or you're a heavier rider and you need higher pressures for obvious reasons, then these wheels won't be for you. And I've spoken to a few tyre companies that are recommending no more than 80 PSI, but some companies are saying yeah, it's fine. So there's some um, a gray area between what's okay and what's not okay. But it's generally seen that low pressures are best for tubeless in terms of comfort and roll resistance and not going above 75, 80 PSI seems to be a, um, a good recommendation. For me personally, I've not found any downside to using these rims. The only downside is compatibility. And here it gets interesting and a little bit confusing. Uh, most tire brands are fine. These Schwabies are fine, no worries at all. Although I did speak to Schwabie and they recommended no higher than 80 PSI as per the ETRTO's uh, guidelines. But some companies, mainly Continental with their new GP5000, um, explicitly state not to use on hookless rims. So that's a big, big thing for a lot of people with Continental being a really popular tire brand. A lot of people love the GP5000 and the GP4000 before it. And they took a long time coming to the tubeless market. So that rules out a lot of people who want Conti tubeless tires. Now I do know a few people who have used those GP5000 tires on these rims and other hookless rims and said there'd be no issues, no problems at all. But personally, I don't want to be seen to be endorsing that if they don't recommend it. So I've steered clear of Conti GP5000, but I've used other tires and they've been fine. WTB, Schwalbe, others, yeah, no problems at all. So, there are some downsides to hookless and these wheels in particular, and it won't be for everybody, I think that's clear. But for me personally, as a light rider, I like wide tires, I like tubers, and I like low pressures. There are no downsides for me at all. So to wrap things up, I really, really like these wheels, and no, they didn't pay me to say that. That's my unbiased personal opinion on using these wheels for the last couple of months, and about 1,000 miles of riding over all terrains and different length rides, including a night ride a few weeks ago. What I like is the fact you're getting a, a good price wheel set from a company with a reputation of Zip. The company did a lot to bring carbon fiber wheels to the masses, a lot of aero technology there, and they've been reliable and durable. I've had no issues with the bearings or the spoke tension in the wheels, and the tubeless performance has been first class. No issues installing the tires, no air loss overnight, um, just no problems at all really. And the benefits to the wider internal rim width is you get a really nice profile with wide tires and you run lower pressures. So plenty of comfort, plenty of traction and plenty of speed, so a lot to like. So that's my review of the brand new Zip 303S wheels. If you have any questions at all, do put them in the comment section down below. And while you're down there, maybe consider hitting that like button if you enjoy watching it and found it useful and interesting. And if you really, really enjoyed it, maybe subscribe to my channel for more reviews of the latest cycling tech coming up very soon. That's all for now. Thank you for watching. Keep it safe, keep pedaling, and I'll see you again soon.